guys, it's Al again with another video game review. Today, as you can see from your screen, we're looking at WWE 2K19, the latest edition in the 2K Wrestling series. And how's it going to stack up? Is it going to be wonderful? Yes. Or does it need to fade away and classify itself as obsolete? We'll see in this video game review. Released on October 5th of 2018. This is the latest in 2K's WWE Wrestling games. And I do want to take a look at each of the modes and see how they hold up, what's new, what's been left out, are there any substantial improvements, and how does this hold up from the, asp from the uh, point of view of a regular gamer, given this is a niche product and you're not too likely to get this game if you're not already a fan of wrestling in the WWE. I am a big fan. So we're going to see how this all holds up, but I will try to keep an even head throughout this review. In this here's my player mode, or the career mode if you prefer, you are set in the shoes of an indie wrestler who's trying to work his way up to the WWE. They give you the very basic of the creative suite they have to create your wrestler. You can see here I made a very, very basic guy. I just changed his hair color, put a beard on him, and... I chose the Powerhouse set. You can choose from Powerhouse, Technician, Striker, Cruiserweight, and Giant. And that'll, that'll tell you what skills you have access to, what moves, and the caps on your various abilities. In this case, again, I chose the Powerhouse for what you'll be seeing here. Everything you'll be seeing in this part of the review is going to be from the first section of that Thing of that presentation so that you're not given any major spoilers here. As you can see, the game is given uh, it's given presentations in the form of cutscenes, which vary from insanely annoying, especially at the beginning. Most of the characters are just going to weigh on your nerves if you're anything like me. But as the story goes on, the characters do start to grow on you. And I did start to enjoy some of the characters, again, as time went on, as the story continued. There are some minor branching paths where you can make some decisions and who you ally with, what you do. But it's a pretty linear story. You are also, um, it's not free roaming like it was last year. They take you to a hub where you can talk to a set amount of people. This might affect your match later that night. It might give put you into a side match where you're just doing it not to progress the story but to gain currency, which you can then use to purchase more moves, more taunts, more items of clothing, etc., etc. One thing I do like about the cutscenes in this mode is that all the WWE talent, with one notable exception that I'll talk about in a second here, is voiced by that person. You're about to see a cutscene here where Michael Bloom, aka Prince Albert, if you follow the WWE, is going to talk to you. It's actually voiced by Prince Albert, aka Michael Bloom. Shinsuke Nakamura voices his own character in here. Uh, Braun Strowman, Triple H... Uh, a few other guys that I'm blanking on at the moment. And it works to varying degrees. Braun Strowman's delivery is not very good, but then it's Braun Strowman. He doesn't get over on his promos. He gets over on his look and his presence. So it's really easy to see how that wouldn't work in this type of a setting. However, the one noticeable exception I told you about is John Cena. He's, he didn't voice his own character. It's very obvious he didn't voice his own character if you've listened to him talk as much as most normal wrestling fans have. So yeah, that was very distracting in that section of the game where you have to deal with Cena. But otherwise, Finn Balor, uh, Triple H, The Miz, they all voice their own guys. Most of them do at least a passable job, if not a very good job. So I can't complain about that very much. The gameplay, as far as the in-ring goes, we're going to talk about that more in depth when we get to that section where I'm talking about the gameplay and what has or hasn't changed, and when we talk about the roster and such. 
as far as other things go with this mode, sometimes during a match you are given objectives that you have to meet during the match. Most of them are just, okay, win by pinfall or submission, and that's the extent of the object objective. But it's something like a showcase mode in that, that sometimes you reach an objective and then there's another cutscene. So, and we'll talk about that a little bit more when we talk about the showcase mode, which we're going to do in just a second here. Okay, let's talk about the WWE showcase mode. It is back this year, and this year it focuses around Daniel Bryan, which I'm a huge Daniel Bryan fan, and I do love watching through his journey to the WWE, to where he got, and... I admit I'm not all the way through it. I don't know how far it's going to go, if it's going to get to his comeback or if it's going to stop at his retirement, his original retirement. So I'll see that. You are see, you're just going to see in-ring gameplay from this section because the WWE basically copyrights all the other uh, footage in there. So I don't want to get hit with a copyright strike. So that's why you're only going to see the gameplay from this. But you are going to play as Daniel Bryan through different parts of his career. This is a part where he was basically a, he was a jobber on shows like Velocity. This is a match against John Cena back way back when, when John Cena was doing the rapper gimmick. But that's what you're seeing here. And the game is what you come to expect from Showcase Mode. You're going to be given an objective. You have to get to that objective. Then it's going to show you some kind of a cutscene, like you're seeing right here. And then you'll be popped back into gameplay, given another objective. You have to meet that objective. And it keeps going that way. Eventually the match will end. Whenever it ends, they give you a cutscene to further the story of that character. And it's narrated over by Daniel Bryan, actually talking about his journey. And then it continues to the next chapter. I'm currently only two or three chapters in. I will be spending more time with this over the next few days. And again, big Daniel Bryan fan. I am enjoying it so far. I hope to continue to enjoy it. And I really hope to have fun with this. Although I'm typically not a very big fan of this showcase mode. I would much rather they just let me play the game the way I want to play it. But it is what it is. I enjoy the storytelling of it. But I think that would be something that would more likely be better said as a documentary on their WWE Network rather than put into the games like this as an artificial way to lengthen the game and make it harder to unlock certain skins or items or arenas or whatever. All right, the next thing to talk about here is the universe mode. And if you've played one of these games before, you already know what the universe mode is. You take control of the WWE show booking and you can take certain actions like announce a cash in edit a match simulate matches one big change that you'll see here in a minute once we get to that part is that you can actually control who wins a simulated match this time around that's a nice addition I like um, again editing the matches is always nice that means you can push whoever you want to push now people are limited into how many divisions they can be in, so to speak. I have found you really can only have one person in one division at a time, which is a little limiting if you ask me. Maybe you want Matt Hardy or Bray Wyatt in both the tag team and a singles title division. I've yet to find a way to be able to do that with them on the same show. Although now shows can have multiple divisions which include Money in the Bank winners for both male and female, which again, that's a nice addition. It is a relatively minor addition. And as long as we're onto that, and we can see a match coming up here, why don't we talk about the gameplay finally? Because that's the big crux of these games. First of all, you can see the graphics look pretty good here. I'm playing a <laughs> match as Ronda Rousey. It looks pretty good. The uh, the entrances are pretty close to spot on, at least for when the thing was made. I don't think Ronda had made her debut at the time they started this, so it's entirely possible that they didn't know exactly what her entrance was going to be like. 
so it's not totally there but most of them are most of them are dead on and of course they look like the superstars sometimes facial expressions are weird that's just the way it is with these kind of games I think that's that hasn't improved much and the gameplay well it is what you would expect from any other WWE game it hasn't changed much so if you were a fan of it before you'll likely still be a fan of it now there have been a couple little tweaks I'll talk about here in a second but if you weren't a fan of it you're not gonna like it much now it's still with the submissions that's still a pain it still defaults to that little round chasey game whatever you want to call it that I hate thankfully you can change that manually to the button presses which is still annoying but isn't as as bad I guess not that either of them are terribly good but there's that uh, they did tweak how you escape a cage now you can call for a door to be opened or you can climb out of the cage when you climb out of the cage instead of having the line that goes back and forth and you have to stop it and that dictates how much distance you gain on your way out now you have to hit a certain button and it can be any of the square triangle circle X buttons I'm playing on a PS4 obviously and you have to fill up a meter and then you gain another step basically is what it comes down to so it's a nice little tweak um, as far as I can tell, Royal Rumbles play the same, but I haven't spent a whole lot of time with the Royal Rumble yet. But yeah, gameplay, it is what it is. It hasn't changed much. And on that note, I'm not so sure it isn't time for somebody new to take over these games. Give us something fresh. At this point, it's largely starting to feel like the Madden of wrestling games where it's just a small roster tweak every year and they don't... Alright, next thing I want to talk about is the Create a Suite. Suite. Again, we can create a superstar, nothing new here, create a new superstar, edit somebody on the roster, or edit somebody you've already created. Uh, pretty simple there. You can create a moveset for a superstar. Uh, you can create an entrance. Again, that's the same old same. Uh, you can create championships. Same thing as it has been. You can create a show now, which is the next one here. Uh, I haven't messed with that one much. Uh, you can create an arena, probably for your created show. Uh, you can create a video now, which is back from the past few years. It's something people use for the Titan Trons. You can create a victory animation, which includes you can have different music for the entrance and exits. Now, this is the new one, Money in the Bank. You can create a Money in the Bank briefcase. Um, you're going to see I'm going to toy with this a little bit here. You can create the color. You can edit the material. You can put images on there. I think I chose an image of the earth, which you'll see here in a few minutes. Um, you can tile the image, or you can do a single one and adjust the size. I went with the single one, and I adjusted the size a bit on it. So, yeah, it is what it is. It's pretty basic. I'm not so sure it's something that was really needed in the game. But there's a trophy for it, so... Uh, I believe it's for cashing in your money in the bank. Your custom money in the bank, I should say. So, that is what it is. You can also, when we get out of here, you'll see it at the bottom. You'll be able to edit custom matches again. That's back from, I believe, last year was the first year that was there. Basically, I only use that in order to make a traditional Survivor Series match. Because I, I like that, and I like to pack my Survivor Series cards with those. But other than that, that's about the creative suite right there. Uh, there's also an online one where you'll be able to download other people's creations. Again, this is all back from last year, which is what I use the most. I'm not the most creative guy for making things, so I go online and I try to find people who have already made the people I want to make. You can upload your own, or you can download and upload images. So that's all pretty basic. Again, not much has changed on that front from last year. All right, next I want to talk about the online play. And I haven't delved much into the online play in past years. I don't do it a whole lot. I've only done a couple of matches on this year's. 
But what I found on this year's is the connectivity seems pretty solid. I didn't notice any skipping, any lag. It all ran nice and smooth. As you can see here in between, while it's searching for an opponent for you, it'll stick you in a practice match so you can practice whoever you picked to play as. I picked Big E. It stuck me against Roman Reigns. I only did so-so in the practice match. Uh, you might be happy to know I ended up winning the online match. You're not going to see any of the online match because I don't have the other guy's permission to show his character or anything on the YouTube channel. So I just want to respect that. But you can see there the opponents found. I'm about to go into the fight. But yeah, ran smooth, no problems. Might look into it a little more than I have in the past. So that's what I think about that. All right, the next thing I want to talk about is the roster. How's the roster looking this year? They added a lot of new superstars. Uh, part of the reason I got this one was because they added the new gimmick and music for Matt Hardy. I love the Broken Woken gimmick. But what we're looking at here is the unlockable superstars. I don't have enough of their in-game currency to get anybody. That's why they're all blacked out like that. There are some really noticeable people missing from this. Uh, Mick Foley, Tommaso Ciampa, Nikki Cross. Nowhere to be seen. I have no idea. They were in last year's, so I have no idea why they're not in this one. And it's really disappointing to see those kind of omissions in this roster. Um, this should be one of the best rosters they've ever had. And it's just not. All right, so it's time for my final thoughts. What do I think about the game? Um, I think there are some things to like about the game. They've made a few nice little tweaks. I don't notice as many errors as I have seen in past years. There are a couple cases where an in-game cutscene will play and it's supposed to be somebody trying to distract one of the wrestlers. The music plays. If you've seen wrestling, you know the bit. But no music plays. But the announcer is saying, oh, it's his music. Uh, where is he? Is he going to come out here? Yada, yada. Uh, there's no music playing. The guy's just turning for no reason. <laughs> so... There are still some errors. It's not perfect. The hit detection is still occasionally a bit jumpy. The move animations haven't changed much from last year. Um, a lot of people still have old taunts they don't necessarily use, like Matt Hardy still using his V1 taunt, even though he never does it as the Woken gimmick, and the Woken gimmick's what we have here. So it is what it is. Uh, the presentation is good it's it's always good but the game itself it's literally it's the madden of wrestling games now it's basically just a roster update they don't do much with it if you haven't gotten a wrestling game in a couple of years i would say get it because it's a good serviceable game again if you haven't played one in a couple of years but this is not one that I think you need to get in order to consistently have the latest game. Because it's not that much different from last year's aside from a roster change or two and some new entrances in music. So that's what I think about it. I would wait for a discount price. We'll see what kind of DLC they have for it. There's eventually going to be a Legends pack. There always is. There's probably going to be some kind of a... Uh, uh, upcoming stars pack because there's usually one of those two there's going to be a new moves pack I'm sure but yeah that's we'll see what those are when they come out but I wouldn't buy the season pass I I would wait for this game at a discount oh yeah and Ted DiBiase is in the game as an unlockable character which is a nice addition I've been waiting for him to put them to put him in there as a non- <laughs> on uh, manager for a while he's been stuck in manager mode for for a good while in the game anyway that's what i think about the game i'd probably wait for a discount if you're gonna get it at all it's if you've got last year's you really don't need this one unless you have to have the latest greatest anyway that's my thought on the game i hope everybody enjoyed this review tell me in the comments below what do you think about this game does it live up to expectations? Do you have a problem with the roster? 
think people left out of the roster? Do you want to see a major gameplay overhaul? I know I would love to see a big gameplay overhaul. Maybe even something that gets back into a little bit of an arcadey feel. That might be nice, although I don't think they'll ever quite go back there again. Anyway, this has been Al. Thanks for joining me for another review. I'll see you next time.